First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me as well. And I can't believe that uh, this is the third time we're here. And it seems like uh, the old saying goes that um, we have uh, time flies and we're having fun, right? And starting my third year as mayor, I will say I am a man that stands alone and I will give my due diligence as the chief executive officer to do what I feel is right for our city. Rochester started this year with a cash balance, which we're very, very fortunate, of $942,093.87. Rochester is fortunate not to have to borrow money as some of the other cities have to do before they get their tax. I am starting my first, uh, having my first uh, mayor's roundtable July 23rd this year, so I will be hosting one here in Rochester. And normally about 80 to 100 people come to this throughout the state. Uh, even though it's only about 10 or 12 mayors, but we have a lot of vendors that come and they'll be here at Rochester. And uh, Phyllis, you already introduced them, but the Rochester Sentinel, we have uh, them here, WRI and Channel 4 with RTC. These amenities are great for the city of Rochester. We're very fortunate we have this local coverage of media to uh, get out to the public, that the people that can't be here. At the present time, I'm finishing reading one of Jack Obermeyer's uh, books, and I'm sure many of you have already read these books, but I have taken the time to read the uh, editor's reflections of uh, Resume. Times are changing whether we are willing to accept them or not. An example in my lifetime is the changing of the telephone. And you, everyone here can probably relate to this. In my household growing up, we had a party line. You had to get on there when the other people weren't talking down the road. And or this would be in the road because it was in the country where I grew up. Today, my children use cell phones. Cell phones are used to take pictures, text, and talk back and forth. And that's quite an accomplishment over the short 50 years. As a city, we must adapt to these changes and do more with less. Times have changed. Businesses come and go. In today's world, we are taxed out. Utility rates continue to rise. The city expenses keep rising faster than our cash flow comes in. Starting in the year 2010, evaluating my workforce through the eyes of an entrepreneur, I am creating a new position with an operation manager, who will be Warren Lee since I, we introduced Warren back at the table there a little bit ago. Warren's a veteran of the city for 16 years plus. By doing this, uh, there's a couple of reasons, but I will go through this. This position will work through the natural our, our attrition for the retiring of two of our city's valuable department heads this year. Both brothers, Terry and Jerry Wynn, have been with us for 41 years. As a mayor, I cannot replace them with their experience and knowledge, and I hate leaving, leave, losing both of them. Creating an operation manager will allow us to cross-train employees in time in other departments. An example is, and we do this now to a point, but by doing more with less, if we have a sewer problem that we have to dig, or we have a water main, or we also have a storm sewer, we can pull different people from different positions and departments. Instead of going out hiring more people, we can do more with less. We'll have a uh, water plant operator, as I introduced uh, Randy Wynn back in the back, and we'll still have a department head with the uh, street department, which is Lenny Conley, which will take place when Jerry and Terry retire. Instead of buying all the equipment we need for each department, let's take a look and buy and maybe one backhoe for the whole city or you know, have uh, one tractor for the whole city and use it when the other departments don't need it and just have it move around. EMS is the big topic today. Um, as you know, that the county is pulling EMS away from the uh, hospital and they are looking at having the EMS department stand alone and finance itself. But in the process of this, the county started the low tax, local income tax last, uh, well, it was just last January. I think it went into effect. And well, this year, last year, it went into effect. So we had one year in there. And what that is, is that's bringing us in, I believe, I don't have the exact figures, but it's 800 some thousand dollars. So the, each uh, township and uh, the city and the county split that up. I believe they got a formula for it. I don't know if it's per capita, but then we're getting 250 plus thousand dollars for the city. But also that has to be used for safety, whether it's police, fire, or EMS. 
So we're working together again. Uh, we just had a presentation last night through Mark Rodriguez that we're trying to get an interlocal agreement to work together with the county and all the townships to start having EMS stand on itself and fund it and stand alone where we all kind of work together. Some tweaking to do with our wastewater plant and we've been working with IDM for last year and this year. But the biggest thing we've got now, we just got to try to get our temperature down in the wastewater to make, make sure that we meet compliance in our ammonia levels going out to the stream or the creek that ends up into the river. Uh, we just purchased a uh, fire engine, and I believe uh, the Chief Butler can tell me uh, it's 339000 that we uh, just purchased, and it did uh, get a... Um, very good breaking in procedure. Unfortunately, we had a fire on East 8th Street, and I must compliment uh, Chief Butler. He orchestrated the, uh, we took out of this low tax that we have for fire uh, police and EMS safety. We have, in the process, is being put together and assembled right now as a 3,000 gallon water tanker truck to replace one of the trucks that's roughly 25 years old. It sounds like we're spending a lot of money on the fire department, but then again, safety is number one for the people, I believe, and also these trucks last 25 years, so it's not like we're going to buy one every time you turn around. They look new, but they just get kind of obsolete, and the controls in them start not to work, and, you know, when you're looking at human safety and human lives, uh, I don't want to be the one responsible saying that the truck didn't make it because we wouldn't buy a new one, so. And we are ordering an expedition. expedition? And that's something new for the um, police department. The reason we're ordering this expedition is because we <coughs> need to put it for our detect, not our detective, but our crime scene investigator, which is Corporal Ed Haynes. And the reason we need to do this is because he carries so much equipment in his car, being not only a road police officer, but as a crime scene tech, he keeps that all in his vehicle. So we're going to a larger uh, vehicle that way. You know, the hydrilla kind of stymied that because they found hydrilla out here, as you know, being a lake resident as well. That's, they kind of said no more high, uh, dredging until they get this uh, curtailed of the hydrilla. They did let us do this at the beach, but that was a little different. They just let us dip that out there. And, well, they're putting a beach there at the, by the Ninth Street, a small beach through the uh, Leadership Academy. I think in time, it just depends because they want to, but I, I believe they're out of money. I mean, that's they fill us, no questions. Either that or wake everybody up. Okay, but you'll stay after a few minutes. Yes, yes. If anybody has anything, I'll be the to the And also, if you do have a question, you can always call the mayor's office or get a hold of me and try to work it out. Thank you for inviting me, and thanks again.